I just got done watching Penguin Episode 5 Homecoming. For the past few episodes of the show, they've been doing centric episodes, focusing on showing some more of the backstory of some of the characters. We saw the episode about Victor, then the one about Sophia, and that was good to kind of learn more about what shaped them and why they've been caught up in this whole situation, but this episode, Episode 5 Homecoming, actually progress the story things are starting to move now the pieces are starting to move on the board and we're starting to see some real change here from the beginning of the show Oz has been the one to be a very very good liar and the one to manipulate both the Falcone and the Moroni families throughout the saga but it seems like with this episode things are going to start to maybe bite him in the ass so to speak Oz makes the first move <clears throat> by kidnapping uh, Taj, who is Maroney's son. So it seems like the story, because if you remember in the last episode, Oz, at the end of it, Oz and Sophia agreed to work together, so that would target Maroney as the enemies. And he's doing that basically as like a hostage situation to get the Maroney to turn over the drugs, the, the bliss drug they've been talking about for the past few weeks. And then things get really dark when he straight up kills Moroni's son, like, and wife. Like, that was just, like, this show, like, and I, again, the Batman film in and of itself was dark. This is following right there. Now we're starting to see the real dark side of Oz because you see... What they've done with the show is they've kind of painted Oz as somewhat of a sympathetic figure. And they also did it with Sophia. Like, these characters are very three-dimensional because you care about them in a way that you want to root for their success. But then they go and do something really, really messed up. And you're like, damn, like, I don't know if I can root for them. And this is starting to show Oz's, you know, ferocity. At the same time, though, if you're going to be a crime boss in Gotham, if you're going to be one of Batman's villains, you kind of have to be ruthless. That's kind of part of the game here. And, you know, we're starting to see the origins of the Penguin becoming the Penguin from the comics. Even though the Penguin oftentimes has had some sympathetic storytelling behind him, he's always been a, well, maybe not always, but frequently been a villain of Batman. And what ends up happening is Oz pays off this like a uh, cop to kill Moroni, but it backfires because it ain't going to be that easy, bro. Clancy Brown ain't going down that easy. And uh, that was, you know, now we've got things really kind of cooking here. Not just that, but Moroni gets out. He gets out of prison. So, like I said, the story is now progressing where we've got Moroni on the streets. We've got Sophia and Oz there. Victor's with Oz. So there's just, the pieces are moving, yo. The pieces are moving. One thing I want to briefly talk about that I haven't discussed in the past four reviews is the dialogue. I really enjoy the dialogue of this show. It's well written. I like the way they write Oz as a character, you know, a ruthless, you know, street guy, but somewhat sympathetic. Victor is another character that's written, you know, well, and he's kind of the one where he's caught up in all this, and to me, he represents, like, the audience. Like, what if we were in this situation? That's what Victor represents. At the same time, though, the thing about Victor is he, at some point, we just know he's going to snap and, 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 well, maybe, but it seems like he's going to eventually go down the dark path permanently. Meanwhile, while all that's happening, it appears like Sophia is working her way to becoming the actual boss. You understand what I'm saying? And again, this get, reminds me so much of Godfather 3 because last episode, we saw that it was her own father that turned his back on her and, you know, framed her as being the hangman. And now it's sort of like she's going to become the hangman because of that. Like, the, she's, he created her, if that makes sense. Like, he's, it's kind of like I said in the original Batman 89, when um, Joker's like, you made me. And then Michael Keaton's Batman says, you made me first. Because of Carmine's betrayal, she's now becoming, she's now rising up in the ranks of the mob family and becoming the the figurehead the leader and here she actually reverses it because she you know originally when you first watch the show 
you're thinking that Sophia is kind of, you know, the, the, the ruthless daughter of Carmine Falcone who wants to avenge her father and respects her father and all that. Then last week, we got that whole backstory that changed your entire perspective on the character. And to me, that's good writing because they clearly saw that this character was going to get a certain, uh, elicit a certain response from the audience. So they said, okay, we're going to introduce her like this, but then we're going to reveal this that will lead to this character arc. So I got to give credit for sure to the writers and the showrunners of this show. This episode specifically was written by Brianna Gibson and Shay Ogbonna. Uh, and they did a great job, I think. And so Sophia throws her dad under the bus and pretty much tells the, the rest of the mob that, yeah, he was abusive to you. He didn't really care about you. You know, he, uh, you know, sort of saying that she's going to be different. She's going to take care of the members of the family. And, you know, it was kind of like her in a, in a weird way, maybe getting revenge, maybe using this whole thing with her father to seek vengeance, like maybe not revenge directly, but maybe paying her father back for all the things that that he did and, and what we found out in the last episode, you know, uh, why even be like, you know, you would think she would use her father's name to get everybody else to join her, but that's not what's going on here. So what ends up happening, and this is very unexpected, is Sophia wants to make peace with the Moroni family. That's what she wants, but Vidi is not down for it, so she kills him. Again, this episode, people were getting wasted, and keep in mind, this series is eight episodes, so we've got three more to go, and the next episode's called Gold Summit, then Top Hat is episode seven, and then Great or Little Thing, and I assume that by Top Hat is when the penguin will become the penguin. I mean, it could be a double meaning, but I feel like that is when the penguin will become, when Oz will fully become the penguin. That's my guess, because the episode just says it. So what ends up happening, and this... This is good stuff, man. For, for you know, I've enjoyed this show. Listen, I have enjoyed this show, but it hasn't been one of those things where I've been like, I can't wait for next week. Oh, my God. I have been, I have been looking forward to it, but it's not like edge of my seat type of stuff. After this episode, I actually look forward to watching next week's, and I think, to be honest, uh... I really want to see it because the episode ends in this wild cliffhanger where Sophia finds Maroney and tells her to team up against Oz. So Oz is going around betraying everyone and then Sophia's like, nah, maybe she caught on. Maroney obviously caught on. I mean, there was that conversation earlier where Maroney calls Oz realizing he betrayed him and then Oz was like, you know, call your wife. Like, Real cold-blooded shit, dude. This is one of those stories where there are very few genuinely good people. Like, Victor, I mentioned, is the one that you can have sympathy for as far as main characters go. Even though he might be considered a supporting character, I think he's a main character. However, uh, the other three, Maroni, Sophia, and Oz, bad people, man. Dark backgrounds. So, the story going into episode 6 is they're going to team up against Oz. And they've got a much stronger family. So Oz is going to have to find more people to recruit or manipulate his way out of it or figure out some way to take them both out. And that I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. I'm looking forward to the next episode. I might, usually what happens is I watch the show Monday morning because I'm usually busy on Sundays. But next week I might make some time and just watch it Sunday night and drop a review then only because... I really want to see what happens. And the episode airs at 9 p.m. Um, I don't know when it pops up on Max. It might actually be at 9 or it might be after. I'm not entirely sure. But I think I'm going to for sure watch Penguin next week as early as possible. Because I really want to see where the story goes. Like now the fire has been lit and the story is progressing. So what would you think about the Penguin episode 5 and the show overall? It's it's a fun little show. Um, someone compared it to The Sopranos. I've only seen the first couple of Sopranos episodes. And um, 
it's not as funny. Like, this is much more of a serious crime drama. Sopranos is very, very funny. Uh, lots of slapstick comedy. Lots of, you know, James Gandolfini's face in and of itself is funny. But this is, like, very serious and very dark, like the Batman 2022 film. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments.